So my network's gone under some changes. Um, first off, we're, uh, we're running Proxmox now. So um, still have like eight or 10 servers, but one of them's now running Proxmox. Um, it's kind of my machine for proprietary software, uh, unfortunately, right now. So I've got Oracle Linux running over here. Um, it's kind of doing its thing. It runs a database for me. Um, but more importantly, I've been getting really into Active Directory. So I'm a cloud engineer. I do a lot of DevOps stuff. Um, and I am, and you know, identity management is really important. So there's a ton of ways to do this. And there's LDAP, and there's a ton of Linux solutions. But when it comes down to Active Directory ADDS, or Active Directory Directory Services, I believe, um, is the king, right? Most people run Windows. And if you want to manage Windows, you got to use Windows. So I've been running into a ton of issues uh, personally. So I'll show you right here. Got SSH working. Uh, it's kind of messy. Uh, working on some stuff there. And I, I really do want to talk about PowerShell and how it compares to Bash and some of the pros and the cons. Because I think there, there's a lot of stuff about PowerShell that fascinates me as a Bash user. Um, as a developer, there's some really great tooling built into uh, PowerShell. So for example, everything with Bash is strings, and it doesn't really treat variables the same way as PowerShell. So for example, uh, let's go, I think over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if we look at enable PowerShell, you're going to see some, some really funky stuff in here. Um, that's really interesting. So if we look at this, um, you'd see a very similar command in Bash. Um, just to give you an idea, I'll make it a bit bigger. Oh, oh. Okay. So we're setting an SSH version where we're going to use, excuse me, the get Windows capability. Um, and we're going to be looking for something that matches the name open star, right? That's pretty simple in terms of like, you could do this very easily in Bash. Um, but what's really interesting is it actually comes out into, and I can show you right here, comes out into a list. Uh, and from that list, we can actually select an object as if it were JSON, grab a dot name. Um, and then we have to actually pipe that into an out string or stringify the variable. Uh, in Bash, everything is strings, and when it's not strings, it gets really messy and it takes a lot of work. Um, and Bash is a really gross language, and it's one of my favorites. But this is really interesting, and it's, it's really cool how this works. Um, it's an object-oriented um, shell language, which you just don't see a lot of in the Linux space. Um, you can definitely throw PowerShell on Linux, or you can try to do some kind of really weird logic to make something like this happen, but this isn't the default. So I've been having a lot of fun with this, and I've been writing a lot of scripts, and I've been using you know, PowerShell ISE over here to do it instead, which is its own whole thing. It's honestly a decent IDE. Um, but yeah, I've been working a lot with PowerShell lately, and my biggest complaint is that Windows wasn't built for PowerShell. It was more or less built for CMD. Um, but overall, you're not supposed to do what I'm doing here. Um, and I was really inspired to do this for a lot of reasons. Um, but I'm trying to completely automate this Windows Server using exclusively PowerShell. If I can write into a script, if I can make it some kind of like cron-esque job, that's what I'm going to do. Um, but I've taken a lot of Windows administration courses for my degree and things like that. And everything went through this. This is the Windows Server Manager. Um, and it's how you're taught to work with uh, Windows. So to give you an idea, go to manage here, we can add a role or a feature. Um, so again, one really big thing I want on this server is Active Directory Directory Services, ADDFs. Um, and you, know, you click through, and of course you have to remote into it. So I'm using a web browser here, which you use VNC or RDP, whatever you really prefer. Um, and we go to a role-based feature, go next. And we're going to say, yep, throw it on this server. And then we're going to say, I want Active Directory direct domain, domain services. There we go. Click Add Feature. You click Next. Kind of select all the things that's needed. Um, let's say, for whatever reason, you need like load balancing or some kind of SMTP for whatever reason. I can add that. Um, we go in through here. We go a bit further. And it's going to tell you, hey, this is how you install it. These are the kind of the tools you have. And one great thing about Microsoft is their documentation. I will hands down, like they have some of the best documentation I've ever seen. I think it's a problem with Bash. But they've got great documentation here. And you click Next. And then you confirm and install. 
but that's that's not the Linux way, right? So I'm not actually going to do that. I'm still kind of working this up and getting it going. And you know, just to get SSH enabled on this server took me 30, 40 minutes, and uh, it has a lot to do with Bash um, being my primary language and PowerShell being much more tertiary. But um, Windows just wasn't built to work the way people think in Linux, right? And this is a really good example here as well, and I've got a lot of stuff I've been working on going through my head. Um, but this is probably a directory you've never worked in or likely haven't worked in, but it's the HKLM. Uh, it's the HK local machine. So this has a lot to do with like the registry and kind of working through there. And if my terminology is at all wrong, let me know. Uh, get a Linux guy. But this is working through the registry and searching for applications. And it's just, it's not, you know, the same thing as cdink to root um, and then going into the etc, finding the configuration files, you're going into bin and finding the binary file. You have to jump through hoops and you can tell that a lot of this was kind of hobbled together. Um, and it's, it's just not a clean solution here, right? So, and you know, we got a CD to C, to throw in the backslash, go here, and you can CD into users, uh, administrators where we're sitting, CD into documents, and you know, this is where I have my enable PowerShell script. And then to open it, you have to go to notepad.exe and do SSH. And again, this just isn't well built for SSHing and you know doing things remotely through a terminal. I the terminal literally opens that application to uh, write a script. So there's a lot of problems um, I've been finding, and you know it really does come down a lot to just different ideologies, different methodologies, different organizations creating their applications, but. Uh, server Manager and Windows Server were built to be easy to use um, for a beginner, uh, where I believe um, Linux is, in my opinion, much easier to use, but there's a much steeper learning curve. So their goal was to flatten the learning curve, um, and I think in the process they made server administration slower, uh, more verbose, um, and just not a good experience for automation. So, you know, we live in a cloud-native world, um, we live in a world where automation is king. Um, just to turn on SSH, you have to run this script here, right? It's not very clean. It's not a great way of doing things. Um, and it's not the way they want you to do it. They want you to do it through Server Manager. So I'm going to be you know, figuring out this journey. Um, I, I post all my code on GitLab. Um, I'm not going to be updating my, my Linux blog on any of this because it's not really related. But um, come along. Uh, we can kind of see how to use PowerShell in a way that, you know, can I get Git installed on PowerShell? Uh, I got SSH working, but can I get PowerShell to default when I log in over SSH? Can I do that through a script? Because right now it's defaulting to CMD. Um, it's, it's a very laborious process, and I just don't believe it was designed for modern day automation and modern day system administrators. So again, a lot to, a lot to learn. Um, PowerShell is a very cool language in a lot of ways, um, especially from a developer's perspective. I think PowerShell was built for developers, while Bash was built for system administrators. Um, and there's some nuance in there, but uh, yeah, overall, it's kind of like uh, Brian Lunduke did a challenge where he tried to use only a terminal on his client machine for a month. Uh, and my goal here is to use only a terminal to get a Windows server with ADDS and maybe some other services. Um, properly running in my network um, without ever using server manager. So uh, again, really breaking the operating system here. It wasn't built for this, but it's an interesting experiment and uh, hopefully I can show you guys some cool stuff along the way. So thanks for watching.